Hi folks, Jonathan Wilson, and today's blog is going to be a little different. We're going to go into the past for a little bit. Um, some of you who may scour my website or some of my earlier uh, YouTube blogs may have seen an evolution going on over the years. Um, I wanted to, uh, I just found this, uh, this is the prototype of the very first uh, Togaman guitar vial prototype. And it has all the markings of R&D abuse and trying different ideas and so forth and so on. Which is kind of funny because I really did go to a lot of trouble to send this over to uh, Pat Wilkins for this uh, sort of a PT Cruiser gold finish it looks like. Um, but anyway, this is the one, the very first one, uh, solid body, uh, that was initially designed to solve a problem uh, that was, I was doing looping performances and having something acoustically too efficient overpowered what was coming out of the monitor. So I, a sol solid body would be quieter. Also it could, you know, roll a knob and play trick the sound man. Uh, but anyway, this is the first, the very first Toga Man. You can see the old headstock there, the old classic one. And it was kind of a straight, you know, thing. Uh, I had no idea I was going to actually reproduce this thing, <laughs> but it just happened. You can see some of the old, uh, this is an actual styrofoam mock-up of the bridge. I was trying to get a 3D model of the instrument. I think all the other templates and drawings were thrown away over time. I still have some of them. This is like one of the other experimental bridges. And there's a few more, but you, you get the idea. So this thing took a lot of uh, abuse. This was a preview prior to when I started putting a pickup ring on these. I no longer use the uh, magnetic pickups, and that's a sort of a, another topic in and of itself. This uh, particular instrument here was a little more, you know, just a little more refined version of the first one. It um, this one was actually built um, uh, for the NAMM show in 2005, so it was actually built in 2004 or at least mostly built in 2004. It came from the same plank of wood that a couple of other famous ones uh, were uh, built from. Uh, same plank of alder, uh, the one Tyler Bates uh, made famous in uh, the movie 300. This particular one was, uh, uh, yours truly played it on a uh, popular uh, video game called Borderlands, and about one third of those tracks you can hear one of the, this very one. Um, I used to, used to play in a uh, sort of a jam duo trio kind of uh, thing. We used to terrorize City Walk and go to the art museums up to Santa Barbara as a, a group called 2GV, which um, we actually had a little CD out at the time. If you're interested in one of those, just let me know. Um, but anyway, this one uh, had a uh, more of, I believe that was Paduke. This one... Um, was a Coca-Bolo rosewood. And over the years I've started shying away from those oilier tropical woods partially because I'm personally allergic to it uh, and, and the woodworking. You can see that the, there was a little difference in the two headstocks here. One had the, the plain Toga Man and this one had a little more of a colorful version of them playing what looked like the first one. And you can see the I used to have the control covers that came off real easy, like with, with Velcro. Uh, and that was the, the string through block there. Um, kind of chipped it there, I think, once upon a time. These are actual bolts that go through. This had the uh, classic um, neck pocket design, kind of uh, what was uh, originated by Fender a long time ago. And we've since gone to some other, other things. Uh, one being, uh, this neck here is, uh, there's a couple pedestals that mount on it, so it's not a um, not an actual pocket mount, but it actually elevates the uh, fingerboard to a more comfortable playing place. I um, thought I'd share a couple things with you. With the, this, uh, this fingerboard was from just after the era this one was made, and it belonged uh, to... Um, Loga Torkian, uh, Ramin Torkian from uh, Niaz. Uh, he and his wife Azam are, do some wonderful uh, world music. And um, this was actually the fingerboard that was used on the first Niaz album. 
And uh, over time, Logos started noticing my necks were getting better and better. So he, you know, I did do an upgrade on that neck. And this one was a um, fun experience. Still has my San Fernando, California uh, markings on there. Oh, let's see. This is one that was once upon a time one of these. And you can see the, where the routing was there. And this was a prototype for what would later be this one that you see on the table here. So actually, we took that original body and cut it in further. And I'll give you a sort of a side by side comparison. You can see that it's narrower. So it started off like this, and I took it to the bandsaw, cut it down, and made the waist a little more comfortable. The bridge is actually higher as well. So this was a prototype of this. I'm thinking of possibly um, sending this over to uh, having it sanded, cleaned up a bit, and sending it over to Pat Wilkins and doing like a custom graphic on it or something. But anyway, that's a sort of a, a transitional prototype to the ones we're building now. Um, unfortunately, I don't have this one assembled today, but um, you can go on some of the other blogs and see ones like it. This one is a, uh, I believe to be a tunic model. And uh, there's, uh, there's the there's the Spartans, the tunics, and uh, the chalice, which has the flame maple on it on the top. So and it's a little more dressed up. Anyway, I thought this would be a little fun uh, blast from the past. And um, I got to tell you, it has been an incredible journey uh, from the time that I started uh, this thing off. Constant, I didn't have all the tools and things I had then. I had basically a file and a piece of alder. So let's just say I started off with a bastard file and a dream uh, doing this whole thing. And uh, what, you know, word got out and there was a few orders that came in and I, we just kind of went for it. So here we are um, today, many, many movies later, many video games and TV shows and all of you who have supported uh, me over the years, thank you very much. This has been, you know, it's just such an awesome joy to see all the things that have happened since this time. And the, the instruments have evolved quite a lot uh, in the time since then. And um, you all were a part of making that happen. And uh, thank you very much. So anyway, I just uh, thought I'd sh uh, share with you some early relics of, um, of a time just a few years ago. You know, we were just kind of the 12th anniversary of 9-11 just happened uh, yesterday. It's the 12th day. And, uh, you know, I guess we, uh, we all reflect on where we were at the time. And uh, previous to this, I was building uh, some 10-string baritone uh, Mexican instruments called Bajo Sextos, Bajo Quintos, and they were called the uh, Guillermo Robertos and used to uh, build those down at castles. And I remember after taking the very first order is when the uh, the day after or day or two after is when um, when the planes hit the building. So it's it's an amazing time of of reflection to see just what happens in the span of uh, at this point a dozen years, and then not long after that, uh, and later about a year later, this thing coming into fruition, and uh, eventually this one, and eventually this one. And nowadays, we're building acoustic models. Here's a nice uh, bistro that's just coming off the uh, rack, getting finished. So there's uh, acoustic models, there's uh, electroacoustic models. Lots happened. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you today, and uh, have an exceedingly awesome day, and be inspired.